Welcome to Garden Sanity. I'm Laura, and I'm going to take you on a little tour of part of my backyard. It's a beautiful morning. I'm in Zone 7, Southern New Jersey. And in this video, I'm going to show you a lot of color, texture, evergreens, and adorable little berries. Plus, I'll show you the reason I think YouTube needs to have Centivision. And <laughs> I'll explain that in a moment. Let's get started. So I planted this bed last summer. This was a former vegetable bed eons ago. And then we turned it into a sort of a nursery bed for plants we didn't know where we wanted them to be. And then last summer I finally turned it into an actual bed. So now it's our really pretty garden bed. I call it the long bed because it's long. I'm real fancy with my names. So this is a little quick fire hydrangea or it's a quick fire hydrangea. And the difference is size. And I don't know which it's gonna be, and that's why I put it in a pot. It didn't bloom this year, it was very small, but the size increased wonderfully. So I'm very happy with this. I didn't expect to get flowers out of it. The tag said little quick fire. The plant container said quick fire, and I had ordered a quick fire. I think I ordered this from Home Depot. This was last year. And I didn't even notice until I was planting it, the difference. So. I was kind of stuck and I decided, you know what, I'm just gonna plant it in a pot until I can kind of see what the growth is like. Because the last thing I wanna do is plant it where I think it's gonna be huge and it's dinky, <laughs> gardening term. Or I plant it thinking, oh, it's just gonna be, you know, three to five feet and then it becomes this huge six to eight feet guy. So I gotta wait and see. And then in the bed, I've got two lavender phenomenals right here. And you can see that they are basically done blooming. There's one or two that are putting out some color. But for the most part, they are done blooming and I am gonna be coming in and pruning these. And I will do a video of that upcoming very soon. And then next to it is a firelight hydrangea that I planted last year. And let's take a closer look at this one. So it is on its way to change color. You can see it's got more of a sort of a pinkish cast to it. These were white most of the summer. And I did get a few baked blooms from the extreme heat. It happens, and like I showed you with the little quick fires, it upset me at first, and then I realized it just is what it is, and not much I can do about it. But these strong stems, there's four of them that jutted up from the middle. They're doing great. I mean, look at that. Look at that color. Isn't that beautiful? So Firelight Hydrangea has unbelievably gorgeous fall color. It gets a cherry red pinkish color that almost glows. And I mean, I, sometimes I think it does glow. But it's not there yet, it's on its way. So right now it's making a nice transition. And again, like I said, some of it got baked. So we'll see what the color ends up looking like. I think I have the most hope for the taller stems to have the best, most beautiful color. But I love this shrub. I mean, I think I've said in prior videos that it was surpassing my love for Pinky Winkies, which was my first love. And you know what? Pinky Winkies are still my first love. But boy, this is a very close second. I love how the pinky winkies in the front yard look right now. And you can see that in the video I did on my front yard garden tour, just filmed last week. But I know what's gonna happen is once these are in bloom, I'm gonna say this is my favorite. <laughs> so eventually Firelight gets to be six to eight feet tall and wide. So it's on its way. Really pleased with it this year overall. Then you have the two golden euonymus here, and these did not move from their spot that we originally stuck them in, in this quote unquote holding bed, not sure where we wanted to plant them. <laughs> and they started growing so well, we just kind of left them. I said, you know what, I'm not moving them when I start this new garden. Now this is some floppy verbena, flopped over a little bit. Urbina bernariensis and moths and butterflies are still loving the flowers on here. So we're happy with that. It's 
flowers are so tiny, aren't they? Next to that is the Totally Tangerine Geum. This is two plants and they are getting a little bit frustrated with all the heat and humidity. You can see they've got some black spots, brown spots on their leaves. That's no big deal. I mean, I'm not worried about it. This happens every year. There's enough leaves that look absolutely beautiful. It's not a anything you need to be worried about. So if you see that on your plants, it's, you know, it happens. It's not anything I worry about like I worry if I see black spot on roses, for example. And ornamental onions of an unnamed variety that I planted there from another bed. And then, finally, <laughs> finally, I planted the popcorn drift roses. Whew. There they are. I planted two of them. Now, what was in this spot were three Kramer's Red Winter Heaths that I had transplanted. And by the way, those heaths do not like to be transplanted. And they showed me that. They said, nope, we're not growing. We're going to look like blah, insert word. So these guys look really good right now. And that's not how they always look during the summer. In fact, there was a fellow gardener that watched my pruning drift roses video. I had to think which video it was. And she commented recently and said, you know, her roses were eaten up and they looked awful and just didn't even know what to do. And I told her mine looked like that too. I had these in pots all summer and they just got eaten alive. I don't know by what, but I, a couple weeks ago I came out and I, while they were still in their pots, I cut them back and cut off. I didn't cut them back so much as what I did was cut off all the dead growth or the chewed up growth and there's still one or two areas that I left on here accidentally but you can see those hey look there's a rose hip back there <laughs> it's not funny they will get rose hips occasionally if you leave the dead flowers on now a lot of people don't even bother deadheading these I'm semi good about it they are much better drift roses are than knockout roses in terms of shedding the dead flowers you know the remaining what remains will just fall off so I kind of do a decent job at deadheading, but I'm not as anal about it as I am with the knockouts. So anyway, back to what I was saying is I sprayed these with Bonide 3 in 1, and I had to do it a few times. And the new growth looks great, and now they look like really nice, green, healthy plants. No, I don't see any rosebuds on them, but who knows? Maybe we'll get some roses before the end of the fall season. I don't know. But they're planted in the ground, which is the most important thing. I mean, I did it. I finally did it. In the beginning of the season, I had a video talking about being overwhelmed in the garden, and this was one of the things I listed as needing to plant. And then it just got too hot, and I had to wait patiently all summer. Now, this little spot right here, what do I want to grow there? I don't know, but I'm going to obsess about it all winter long and drive my husband crazy. There, I said it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to put there, but I will enjoy figuring it out. That's part of the fun. And plus, it'll give these guys a chance, you know, to kind of fill in a little bit, too. I want to be conscious of that because these do fill out. They won't grow up so much as they grow out. Um, I'll put the growth measurements on the screen for you so you can see. Behind that is the Amsonia storm cloud, just kind of doing its thing. Eventually, that's going to look like a shrub. Eventually. But it's good. It looks healthy. I'm happy. And then right above this... What do you see? Oh, you see gorgeous, gorgeous berries. Let me show you the berries on this tree. Look at all these berries. <laughs> this is so many more than we had last year when it was a new tree. I'll try to put the camera up so you can see in the sun, you can see them even better. Look at all of them, aren't they great? And they do stay on the tree like they say. I mean, one or two will fall off probably when birds are eating them. But the birds seem to be really happy with them. You know, they won't dive bomb while I'm out here to try to get some, which is a good thing. But these will persist on the tree into the winter time. And they're just beautiful. Boy, do I love these. Really is a nice surprise in terms of additional interest that you get going into the fall. That is just pretty. And I stepped back so you could see how the tree has filled out too. 
You can see, I hope you can see, it's a lot wider than it was last year. It's very airy in habit, which kind of surprised me. But I think the reason the leaves are small on the inside maybe is to make way for the berries. I don't know. But it's a definitely, definitely a different habit than I expected it to be. But it's okay. It's gorgeous. I love it. And it's happy here, so it makes me love it even more. Like I said in a previous video, you gotta love when plants love you back, right? It's gotta be a two-way relationship. The trunk is getting thicker too, and I still have that rabbit protector around the base of it, but I think I'm gonna have to actually enlarge it a little bit. You know, there's still room, but you can see how much thicker it's getting. So it's happy and it's growing. Back there is another little lime punch hydrangea. That one did not bloom at all this summer, but it grew and that's what I wanted it to do is just grow. So we will see what it puts out for us next year. I don't even think I trimmed that, if anything. I barely touched it in the spring. Just wanted it to start putting out some new leaves. And then here's another lavender phenomenal. And I'll be giving this one a pruning as well. Pruned it in the spring and I'm gonna give it another trim up in the fall. I'll show you that, like I said, in a future video. And then we have the King's Gold Mop Cypress that was rescued from the wet bed. Okay, I gotta come up with a better name than wet bed. That just sounds weird, right? I'll come up with it. But anyway, that was the previous video I showed you where we transformed the wet bed. <laughs> wet garden bed? I don't know, I gotta get a better name. But I think the color is very pretty with the berries and the butterfly bushes, which are just stunning. And I just want to mention, you can sort of see behind the butterfly bush and the king's gold cypress. You see that little shrub back there? I'll talk about it in a minute. That's a boulevard cypress. Eventually that'll be about five feet tall. So it'll stick out much better. Provide additional evergreen interest in this bed. The variety of butterfly bush is true blue. And there's two of them here. Look how beautiful these are. They were looking really ragged in about mid-August. Again, from the heat, you know, nothing you can really do. So I did deadhead a lot of them. I mean, I, I kind of gave it almost, you would consider a sort of a pruning, but not a pruning pruning. And it just kick-started it to start new and now it's covered with beautiful flowers. And I wish YouTube had a Scentivision. I won't call it Smell-O-Vision because that sounds gross. But Scentivision would be wonderful because the honey scent is so amazing when you get up close. It is so welcoming. It is so inviting. It is so peaceful. So if you want some garden sanity, grow a butterfly bush, any variety, and you are going to get this gorgeous scent. I mean, wow. It is just something else. These are two shrubs, like I mentioned, just so you know, because it looks very thick like one shrub. And you even get growth all throughout the shrub, even down to the ground, which is nice. So I'm out here early in the morning. So I think the butterflies and moths haven't fully woken up yet, but boy, we've had quite a few monarchs that are loving this as well as other butterflies and moths. I mean, it's just, it's so wonderful to see. We just absolutely love it. And then my favorite shrub. <laughs> I say that at almost about every evergreen I have. This is the Boulevard Cypress and look how beautiful it is. It is just stunning. I pruned this so that I can maintain a somewhat narrow habit. You can see that a little bit. Pardon me for any of the sun flare that's happening. The sun is just coming over the house. Let me see if I can fix that and stand this way. So yeah, you can almost trim this like a bonsai in terms of, you know, shape it into any shape you want. And look at that color. Oh my, do you see that? It's blue-green, but it's got like some almost silvery white to it. It is stunning. 
And you can see the new growth that it's putting out. And what I love is, it, and I did this on purpose, it is a similar color to the blue-green leaves of the butterfly bushes. Just so pretty. And eventually, like I said, it's gonna grow taller and it's gonna be some nice interest, especially when these aren't in bloom. They're not evergreen butterfly bushes or not. And in the springtime, when they get cut down to the ground and there's daffodils all around, this will be a nice backdrop for the daffodils. So this is the back of the bed, so you can see that too. You've got the Boulevard Cypress, the King's Gold Mop Cypress, Little Lime Punch Hydrangea, Amsonia Storm Cloud, Golden Euonymus, and down there is the Firelight Hydrangea. And it's across from the Hydrangea tree bed. And then the front side of the long bed, so I can give you a shot of the yard. And then the bed I need to rename. We're not gonna call it a wet bed, that's gross. <laughs> I don't know, let's see, do we call it the button bush bed? The clethra bed? The missing shrub bed? Dun 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 dun! The little Henry sweet spire bed? I don't know, I have to figure it out. But yeah, you just saw this bed last week and it is looking marvelous. That is a winter gem box what I put back there for some winter color since the Button bush is not evergreen. And even though I said it doesn't matter because we're never back here, I still wanted some evergreen. And then over here is a juniper, and I will put the name on the screen because it evades me at the moment, along with some wild garlic growing that shouldn't be there. Yeah. <laughs> there you have it. And the little Henry Sweet Spires are continuing their march towards gorgeous, 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 gorgeous red color that I cannot emphasize enough how beautiful this is going to be. And you'll see it all unfold live on a future episode of Garden Sanity. <laughs> so I'm going to sign off for now and inhale these. Thanks for watching and until next time, happy gardening.